This is Elias Dufexis. You're watching that Tom Clancy show. Hello, everybody, and welcome to another brand new episode of that Tom Clancy show. Nice. I am, of course, your lovable robot and hoodie host, Mr. That Tom Clancy. And, of course, uh, as always, fictional cat. So good to see you, my friend. All right, let me just do the thing where I sit down and I just... Ah, oh, yeah, that's so much better there. Um, but let me just get some of my augmented reality stuff out of the way. So, man, it's been a crazy, crazy week so far. I know we had the day off yesterday, but don't worry. Got a good show lined up for you today. Uh, this week also happened to mark the 10-year anniversary of Lambeer Entertainment, the studio behind Luft Rouser's Ridiculous Fishing and Nuclear Throne, among others. Unfortunately, this week also marks the closing of Lambeer. Uh, Rami and JW made the decision to part ways after 10 years, and while it is a sad time for fans of their games, it's still good to know that they aren't leaving the scene as they both have plans for the future. So uh, let's get some Fs in chat uh, to pay respect to Vlambeer one last time. Yeah, I just noticed the message. I'm good. How are you? Oh, cool. But yeah, you guys have that F. Uh, you know, I'm doing, doing quite well. Uh, but also another thing too to remember is hold the presses. Apparently, Square Enix's Avengers game is actually good. Now, surprising literally everyone, uh, Marvel's Avengers turned out to be a pretty good, if uh, kind of derivative game. Citing the single-player campaign as the main strength, reviewers have mostly looked favorably at the game, which is currently sitting at about a 71 on Metacritic and a very positive on Steam. Now, those aren't the best reviews, but they're a hell of a lot better than the lol canceled my pre-order comments uh, that were going on during the beta weekends. Now, I think Josh Wise from VideoGamer.com put it best at the end of his review when he said, Almost Worthy is still pretty good. Now, in uh, positive news, Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 1 Plus 2 also came out, and that game's amazing. So, that's always going for us. Now, uh, in a bonkers move that only makes sense when you remember that Nintendo is a toy company. Uh, Super Mario 3D All-Stars and Super Mario 35 are releasing for the Switch this year, but with an expiration date. Uh, I get 35, the, the, the Mario uh, kind of battle royale. Uh, that makes a bit of sense. I mean, it's the anniversary, it's a special event, give it a limited time, an exclusive feel, and then shut the game down. I get that. I don't like it, but I get it. As for 3D All-Stars, a collection of fan-favorite Mario games, uh, Mario 64, Super Mario Sunshine, and Super Mario Galaxy, uh, Nintendo has made the uh, brave decision to limit their av availability on the eShop. So even though it's a digital package that takes up no real space and costs pennies on the dollar to host and also port, uh, Nintendo has decided that the games will only be available for purchase through the end of March. I mean, nothing like artificial scarcity to drive some sales, huh? <laughs> uh, another big one here, too. Uh, wait, why is my camera angle wrong? There we go. I don't know what broke it. But so uh, Facebook made this big decision that all Oculus users are going to have to tie uh, their Oculus account to a Facebook account. And I didn't say anything about this because I just sat back and laughed as a Steam VR user. And I put some popcorn in the microwave because I knew that eventually something bad was going to go down. Uh, thankfully, my popcorn just finished popping because something bad finally went down. Uh, Oculus has decided to halt sales of their products in Germany ahead of a probable investigation by supervisory authorities in uh Germany. See, it's apparently illegal to force customers to use a service that collects user data as part of the license to use a piece of hardware that they purchased. Dude, thank you, Europe. 
Thank you for taking up the responsibility of holding tech companies responsible for predatory business practices. First, we get Belgium. They go after EA for loot boxes, and now Germany draws some battle lines around Facebook. Look, Oculus might be the king of virtual reality right now, but Germany's about to give them a real ass whooping. So uh, that's it for jokes. I hope some of them were funny. See, I told you, guest, uh, who is just off camera over there, uh, that I had to do jokes too. Uh, oh, I broke it when I threw the F. Dang. So they're going to sell them separately after the expiration of the shop and then Galaxy 20 shop. Well, whatever, man. They got to communicate that to the people. But uh, my guest today... Uh, is the developer behind Clan Man 2, a game about stand-up comedy, and hopefully he's as funny as my open monologue was, opening monologue was. Uh, now, check out this trailer. Tired of working a dead-end office job day in and day out? <laughs> Do you ever crave more excitement in your life? Don't you want to be better than what you are now? You know, a loser. That's right, you suck. You're a horrible person and no one likes you. Want to do something about it? Well then, we've got just the thing for you. Bits and pixels, please welcome me. Er, welcome me. Why are you welcoming me? I'm here all the time. Don't welcome me. Welcome my guest. So let's give our guest a warm that Tom Clancy show welcome. Bits and pixels, Martin. Hello, Martin. Hey. Welcome to the show. Thank you, Tom. Thank you for having me. Oh, absolutely, man. Uh, yeah. You had me at stand up comedy RPG. Hey. It's a yeah. It's a it's it it catches your attention. I think it really does because uh well one those are two things that don't really go together in my mind. Uh, but now having played through the prologue, definitely do. Yeah, I, I'm I'm glad you think so. I there's like ninety percent of development is me second guessing that. Like, does this work? Is this good? I don't know. Uh, if but, it yeah. makes you feel any better, I'm second guessing this show right now. Oh, oh my. so uh well uh before we get started in earnest uh i'd like to ask every guest who comes by and sits on the couch what are you playing right now oh man uh i'm actually replaying planescape torment uh which was a big inspiration for for clam one uh for clam two i mean i'm also playing uh for no good reason i'm playing rainbow six siege again as well as uh, just tons of Tetris, as as usual. I mean, look, man, you don't need a good reason to play a game or not. Yeah, fair enough. You know, like, are, are you having fun? That's the thing. I, I, I'm playing a lot of Rainbow Six Siege, and I'm not sure if I'm having fun, but I keep playing it. Well, clearly something's going on that's There's keeping something you, there. you know, going back and forth. No, I would just like to say uh, uh, for, uh, uh, like, due diligence or whatever... Uh, I don't play Rainbow Six Siege. Like, no offense to the game. Or the developers. They made a really cool game. Uh, mm -hmm. But I did get a free copy that I don't play. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. So, uh, Rainbow Six. Uh, yeah. I mean, it's a pretty fun game. I played it at E3. And uh, I, I had some fun with it. I think it was mostly because I was playing against games journalists who generally aren't the best at video games, and I managed to just completely destroy them. Yeah, that's fair enough. It's it's interesting because I'm the game's been out for like well, almost five years now. Like it, it's been out for a while, right? It, it will I, be I, five years in November. Got it. Right. Right. Uh, yeah, and I'm jumping into it now. I'm playing with some friends. And it's weird because it's it's kind of fun, but everyone else knows the the like the map layouts. They know the weapons. They know like all the 
classes or or like the heroes or whatever you want to call them. And I'm I'm just like I, I know how to fire a shotgun, and you know, I'm I've, I'm learning one character while everyone else knows the entire game. So it's kind of it's a bizarre experience, kind of trying to be tactical in a game where you have no clue what you're doing. But yeah, it's uh, it's it's interesting. I, I really like the idea. Like it's a it's a really fun idea. Yeah, I just wish uh, personally that the objectives were a bit more important because it basically comes down to uh, uh, just just a death match. Yeah, yeah, I've been you thinking know. the same. It's just elimination. Yeah, like it, and I mean, there's nothing wrong games. with that. Like, that's an excellent game mode, and I dig it in like uh, Destiny. But you know, it's just like I, I I want objectives to matter. You know. Yeah, 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 for sure. So, but that's neither here nor there. Um, the most important thing today is, of course, Clan Man 2. Uh, and I know, like, I could attempt to describe your game, but it wouldn't be the best description of your game. So, uh, in your own words, tell us about Man, Clan it, Man 2. This is, this is the weird one, because it's... Like uh, after a series of, of of pitching documents and and emailing people and talking to like game game journalists about it, and I feel like I have this rehearsed, uh, you know, line that I do every time. But essentially, it's a it's a it's a narrative combatless RPG about stand up comedy. Hmm. It's it's a, it's a game where you the, the, uh, this is like the tagline that I've been using everywhere because people tend to get it. Jokes are loot, and uh, boss fights are comedy shows. That's like the the general, the turn of it, I guess. Look, uh, if, it, it's, if you want any bad loot for your game, you are welcome to take the jokes that I just gave in the monologue. <laughs> oh no, I, I'm I'm perfectly capable of writing really bad jokes. <laughs> That's ninety percent of what I do. I mean, um, actually, honestly, it is fifty percent. Like every joke in the game that you can perform has a failed version of it. So I have to write like fifty percent of everything. All the jokes I write have to be bad. And still funny in some weird way. It's, uh, it's a bizarre experience. I want to say nice in response to that, <laughs> but I have a feeling it's more of a, uh, uh, I respect that you are giving the player the fail state in addition to the succeed state. Yeah, I mean, I've been telling everyone playing the game now is uh, that honestly, the more you fail in that game, the, the, the more actual fun it is. It, it's interesting writing uh, an, a narrative game or like an RPG that's very text heavy about stand up, which is this very sort of, you know, oral performative tradition. Yeah. Uh, it, it, you know, you, you need a, a joke can come down to like a half second of, of, of break between two words. Uh, you know, it can it can come down to your, like your facial expression while you're doing it. And all I got to work with is, is text, essentially. So oftentimes... Uh, when the player is aware that a joke is coming up, when they are performing a joke, they're so like they're so ready for a joke that their uh, their their level of expectations is, is rises like through the roof. You know, like it's it's the same when when if if you walk into a room and say you're a comedian, people are gonna ask you, oh, say something funny. You know, like oh, it's, tell tell us a joke, do this or that, and and nobody's gonna think whatever you say is funny because they are expecting something, and and like. 50% of jokes is is that they're unpredictable or unexpected. Yeah. Right. So like that that's when uh, so successful jokes in the game when you succeed a skill check and you manage to quote unquote create a, like a good joke and you perform that joke generally the the players generally seem to feel like yeah I, I succeeded the check nice. Oh, there's a little bit of a joke here. Uh but then when they get the failed joke when they when you know they when they don't succeed their checks and they get the the weird bombing stuff that's when people laugh. That's when they think it's funny because they don't expect that. They don't. Ex they don't know what's going to happen. So you know, when you break down into a puddle of sweat on stage and you know, uh, someone starts crying in the back, it, you don't expect that to happen. You know, so th that immediately becomes so much more funny and so much easier for me to write in, in comparative to you know writing stand-up routines. Yeah. Uh, well, real quick, I just want to say hello, the Deluxe Tux. Thanks for coming out today. And of course, uh, fictional cat too, but you're here all the time, but I still appreciate you, buddy. Um, yeah, the, one of the things I really enjoy, uh, at least about the prologue that was available, uh, is you give the player this free reign to, oh, hey, Scruffle Bears, 
thank you for the follow. Um, you give the player this opportunity to interact with the world in a way that we all generally wouldn't. Uh, right. You know, uh, because I can't speak to other people, but I can say that my personal inner monologue, especially in day-to-day -day interactions, uh, is full of a bunch of things that people can occasionally say in your game. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah, that, that, that's some of the most fun to write, is the, the dialogue between you and yourself in the game. Yeah. Uh, it, it's Also, oh, sorry. Your, your, your dolphin-headed boss. Uh, <laughs> dude, that guy's got to pick up on sarcasm. I'd be fired from work. I'd be fired with him so fast. I, there should be a moment in the game where you can make a really sarcastic joke that he takes seriously and then you're just like cut out of all his quest lines because he thinks you hate him. Yeah. Or something. Uh, something to point out, and here I'll pull up a uh, screenshot of the game so people can get an idea, is that you've kind of built this world that's uh, reminiscent of like BoJack Horseman, where everybody is uh, anthropomorphic, but they have animal heads. Right, right. Uh, it, it's interesting. Uh, uh, people are comparing it a lot to BoJack, like visually. Uh, I've, I've I've watched like two or three episodes of BoJack Horseman. Uh, I think it's good. I, I just I'm not a I'm not good at sitting down to watch shows. I'm not that kind of person. But uh, people are also comparing the fact that it's it's a it's a jokey kind of dark. Uh, there, there's a lot of like darkness or depression, like just underneath the jokes. And there's jokes about that in turn. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, I think the the BoJack comparison is is pretty fair. Well, uh, the question then would become: Is the main character a really sad uh, drug addict and alcoholic who's trying to uh, <laughs> cash in on their fifteen minutes of fame from forty years ago? I mean, it, you know, when you put it like that, it sounds pretty good. <laughs> it, 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 it's it's tricky, you know, because it's. Because, uh, I mean, this is the sequel to the first one, right? Where, But in the first game, Clamman was very sort of, you know, just a straight man in a in a weird world. Mm -hmm. So everything else was goofy, and, and you were the one who, like, calling it out and being like, hey, this is odd. I don't follow what is going on here. Uh, and in this game, since, you're play since it's a role-playing game, you get to actually shape kind of what the player is like. Uh, so while... I don't know. It, it it kind of goes to like the tradition of RPGs where you where you are literally playing a role. Like you are very set, and you are a character who has this job in this part of the world. This is these are like the people around you, and then it's just how you play that character, rather than a lot of modern RPGs where it's very sort of super open, uh, yeah. where you can create your own backstory, your own this and that. I personally like prefer the former. I think that's a more fun and interesting way of role playing. Like. The variations of how you interact with things. I think I think there's a lot of really fun stuff to be had there. So yeah, yeah. In, in this game there was a there was a like a conscious effort to give you opportunities to to be uh, to be kind of normal, I guess, but in a, in a lot of weird ways. Like the way you mentioned your inner monologues, and we all have different inner monologues. But in those inner monologues, we're able and willing to say more things than we would in real life. So yeah. it it kind of comes down to giving you the variation of that, you know, based on your on your stats in game. You know, I've always kind of wondered in uh, games like this where the player is playing this very prescribed role, uh, do their friends ever wonder, like, you know, if they were real? Like, would they sit down and wonder, like, wow, Clam Man really turned into a dick, <laughs> just like straight out of the blue. <laughs> you know like yeah, yeah. because there the, the very clearly is this state of who clam man was before you know right. as you said he's a straight man in the previous one in a re weird world and then like he just has this moment where he just like snaps and you know like because uh, uh i spent way too much time around english people as a kid so my sense of humor tends to be very dry very sarcastic right, and if right. you know like uh uh people aren't really aware of that like that would be my clam man would be a very big difference from the previous one yeah and, it's, it's it's interesting that you mentioned that because it's it's something that i'm like trying to consciously do in the game and and some characters are 
there, there's a character called Edna, who's like the the kind of the typical hostile, more aggressive, absurdist stand-up comedian. Uh, you know, your your Bill Burr or your Ricky Gervais kind of yeah. Uh, you know, uh, th that kind of of comedian, and it's a really interesting seeing people play the game and and react to her. Some people like are just straight up don't like her because they you know they feel she's rude, she's she's mean, she's you know. Uh, she's not as nice and polite as they wish that character would be, I guess. But then some people just immediately get it. And I think it's, it's similar to what you were saying. Like it's a, it's a, it kind of uh, uh, helps to have that kind of European mindset. Yeah. Room, that British, you know, dry wit, dry, dry kind of banter. Yeah, that's, uh, that, that's one thing that kind of gets to me a little bit is like when, when people come into something and they, they, have no prior knowledge of the character and then just assign that it should be a certain way. Yeah, you know, yeah. like, dude, yeah. characters are characters. Uh, sometimes they're fun, sometimes they're not, but who they are serves the narrative of the story. You yeah, know? Exactly. exactly. Like, it, it's easy to say, like, a good example is like, uh, uh, I don't know how familiar, familiar you are with Theon Greyjoy and like uh, in Game of Thrones, and he was a horrible, horrible person. And that was who he was, and it helped move the story along. And, like, you could be like, yeah, I hate that guy. But you don't come in on episode one and go, whoa, man, he's kind of a jerk. They should have made <laughs> him nicer. Yeah, ex you know? yeah, exactly. It's weird, isn't it? Yeah, it is. It is. Yeah, uh, yeah it really, really is. It, it, um, it's... Uh... It's similar to some people have contacted me, been like, "Hey, uh, you're there's some stuff in your game that you are wrong about," and I'm like, "Wait, like, what do you mean?" And they're like, and they and then they bring up like failed versions of jokes and succeeded versions of jokes where I joke about certain things or fail to joke about certain things. There's a joke about science, uh, and the succeeded version is kind of like how we place this weird like pseudo religious faith in science. And and the the failed version of it is that science is inherently unfunny, so you can't joke about it. And 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 I had someone reach out to me and be like, "Hey, uh, I think you're misguided. I think you're wrong here. Science is very easy to joke about. You should joke about science. In fact, you can do it very, you know, uh, very successfully." And I'm like, I'm like, really? Like, you you failed the check. Like, what what part of this do you not understand? And it, it's really interesting. Like, Did they then uh, uh, follow up with like a, a science joke, like say uh, an electron uh, is talking with a, a photon, and says, "Hey, are you a wave or a particle?" And it says, "I don't know. I'm uncertain." <laughs> you can have that one for free. Yeah, I just I came know. up with that right now. Yeah. yeah. Uh, no, unfortunately, what they did was just do the standard. Uh, I could come up with tons of jokes uh, if you need them. Uh, I'm like, all right. Thanks. I yeah, they it. might as well have just said, "Hey, I have plenty of ideas for games that are going to be good yeah. too." Yeah, and it's I'm worth more of an just idea. as yeah. much. Yeah, yeah, exactly. It's yeah, it's it's kind of it's tricky. It's it's weird when people contact you and say, uh, "Yeah, I think your writing can be better, and I could do it." And I'm like, well, I mean, uh, yeah, it wouldn't be my writing. Uh, I also, I'm not sure if I want to work with you if your initial comment is your writing's not great. I can do it. It's 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 interesting. The internet's an uh, interesting place. Yeah, uh, I'm not gonna say that I haven't had similar people reach out to me, but the funny thing is, is that they reach out to me and uh, uh, tell me that if they wrote the Tom Clancy's games, they would be better. And <laughs> I'm all like, yeah, I've got lots of control over those. <laughs> you know? run to me. I was like, dang. Kids. You guys figured me out. I've secretly been in charge of all of those games since I was 16. Uh, I am a, uh, I'm a writing prodigy. And Did you guys laugh figure track. It out? Yeah. yeah. I added the H and the name and everything. Yeah, I know. Well, I mean, I did that mostly because his name's already out there. And, well, yeah. I got to have my name, which is also his name. That son of a... No. <laughs> How dare he name me after him? I know, right? Uh, Not acceptable. I know, right? Well, uh, before we get like completely tangent off there, uh, one of the things I really appreciate about your game is that it is super RPG, -y, uh, even down to rolling dice. Uh, oh yeah. 
And uh, I think that that's, I mean, you have the four base stats uh, of uh, detection, improv, aqua dynamics, which I have no idea what that is, and self awareness. Um, and it's just, uh, you get these opportunities through the level and i'm guessing aqua dynamics is like your your catch-all physical stat yeah it's um, it's your strength it's your like yeah anything physical and you know at the beginning of the prologue you're uh given this opportunity where you can and you're climbing down an elevator shaft because uh of course you are yeah uh your your dolphin headed boss has decided that uh your actual job <laughs> is not actually worth your time. So let's waste time by trying to figure out what's at the bottom of an elevator shaft. Yeah, uh, I mean, I, I've never worked in an office in my life, but I assume that's what it's like. I've never worked in an office with an elevator. So... <laughs> yeah, but I mean, we're yeah. both missing out. Though, right? I, 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 maybe. I mean, like, I, I, I guess we're missing out on, like, the water cooler chat, but, you know... Oh. Who cares? Yeah, fair enough. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I could, I could, you know, work at an office and come up with lots of excellent jokes about working in an office, or I could not, and not. Um, yeah, as that's you know, it's one of those hard choices you've got to do in your life. Yeah, uh, I'm just gonna say to the audience, I'm sorry that apparently the day that we're talking about a comedy game is the least funny episode of the show, uh, but. <laughs> You know, uh, there's a there's a lot of stuff that goes into comedy that isn't just telling jokes. And, uh, you know what? You, you put it put it on the thing that when you talk about comedy and when people that like talk about comedy talk about comedy, it generally gets really boring. Yeah, because well, it, it, it gets into theory and it gets into like weird pseudo jokes. Yeah, because we're gonna sit down and we're gonna talk, you know, timing, which is right. a huge part of comedy, and it's one of those things that you can't control as well in a game. As you can in, uh, especially not a movie where you have literal control over the flow of time, yeah. uh, or you know, uh, like a play where it's you have that rehearsal, you have uh, you have these these weeks and months to build that up, you know, and it's just yeah, you know, it, it's a game, and it's uh, beyond just being a game, it's a you know kind of turn based rpg yeah yeah it's it's really hard uh the, the like you said having no control over timing and how the jokes come uh is kind of can kind of break it to some extent it's i think the successful jokes uh they're all written to be like stand-up jokes stand-up bits by the way they're not like you know a two guys walk into a bar uh, yeah they're, they're not those kinds of jokes they're literally like written down as a stand-up bit that that could work on stage but the thing is a stand-up bit that would work on stage doesn't necessarily work in written form so you have to be like kind of wary of it in your head as you're reading it so it's almost like a reward to people who who do like stand-up who do care about stand-up and kind of you know kind of find that uh the the groove and, and find the rhythm in it uh yeah. so yeah it's it's the the reward is is kind of looking at the joke and kind of staring at it uh, rather than you know having someone tell it because i mean you were the player you know you were the one telling the joke so yeah. essentially it, it boils down to the same as you know a, a rolling to attack in dungeons and dragons you know you hit yeah. or you don't hit you know man i just kind of wish that like you had a straight charisma stat because like i'd just be <laughs> throwing points all over that yeah. uh but no it's it, you know it's you found like this really kind of odd combination that works and it's just like like yeah it's kind of that you know at this point in the independent game development scene where we've like literally combined just about everything aside from i don't know and i could be wrong uh, uh folks watching at home if i'm wrong please tell me that i'm wrong uh but we haven't seen like an fps dating simulator to the best of my knowledge and like now I just kind of want to make one, but yeah, yeah. you know, it's because in this indie space, uh, you have the opportunity to like literally just like take, you know, uh, this notebook 
and no, not the pen. Notebooks and pens go together all the time, you know. But like you can, you you know, take this notebook. Where did my duck go? Oh, it's in my hand. How is it? This is weird. Virtual monitor. Yeah, so you could just take the duck and the notebook and turn it into a a duck book, you know, yeah. or not like yeah. that because that didn't yeah. work. But yeah, you 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 know, you can just uh, uh, literally do whatever the hell you want. Yeah, and yeah, yeah. yeah. There's the weirdo gal gun series. Yep, knew I was wrong. Thank you, Deluxe Tux. Uh, but yeah, you know, yeah. I don't know where I'm going with that, aside from saying things that I've said on this show probably a thousand times before. Yeah, but I, I think it's, I think you're right. I think it's, 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 uh, and there, there's certainly like a freedom and like an interest in the indie game dev community and the people who like are into indie games to yeah. see those weird combinations, you know? So yeah. I, I, I think like a lot of the reason that Clamman 2 open mic got a lot of visibility and got played a lot was because it's, you know, it's, it, it catches your eye. Like what, a stand-up comedy RPG? Like even if you hate the idea, you're like, wait, how, wait, how does that work? You know, it's like, how, how do you figure that out and how do you make that fun? So it's, it's hopefully, you know, that's what the, making the whole game is, is, is figuring out where where does that combination come from? What does it mean, and 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 how can I make it interesting? Yeah, well, it's definitely you know the hardest part of working in game dev, regardless of what level of it you're at, is finding that fun. Uh, yeah, because it's it, the end of the day, it's uh, something I like to point out with especially people who you know uh, you know like younger developers and stuff and I don't know why people trust my opinions on things but they ask me sometimes and so I give them uh, is you know a, the most beautiful game in the world uh, can't be fixed uh, or, or you know the most beautiful game in the world uh, isn't going to be made a better game because it's beautiful if the gameplay sucks you right. know whereas uh, like super hot, which has one of the most minimalistic art styles I've ever seen, is yeah. an amazingly fun game that yeah. kind of looks like garbage. You know, <laughs> I mean, it doesn't look yeah. like garbage, but you know, it has this very simplistic look. It's not like super detailed and stuff. And yeah. I'm gonna have to check that clip out later, fictional cat. But yeah, so it's just, you know, uh, yeah, it it really yeah. leans into. I mean, I think that's one of the interesting strengths that that. Uh, a lot of successful indies do is they kind of uh e even if they look like like not not great or like not s typically you know triple a and and visual quality or even like you know the typical uh, indie cell shading uh this and that if you can lean into your strengths and lean into how your game looks uh you know that's a success it it's like you, you know uh uh what's the, what's it called hypnospace outlaw hyperspace yeah. outlaw the like the the nineties browser looking game. That game looks awful, but it like in a fantastic way. Yeah. Well, you I mean, know? it takes a lot of work to make a game look like a bad game from thirty years ago. <laughs> yeah, yeah, for sure. Uh, just as uh, you said, it takes a lot of work to make a bad joke. Oh yeah, it, it's it's. Uh... <laughs> um, you it's, know it's, yeah. It's, Really, really hard. Right, I'm sorry you were here for a bad joke day, uh, because I, I I had great jokes the other day. <laughs> That's always the case. Yeah. Well, I mean, like, uh, uh, there was uh, 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 my one political joke, which was that uh, Joe Biden, uh, his campaign made an Animal Crossing island. That was like a big campaign thing, and uh -huh. uh, I then uh, my joke was that. Uh, uh, Donald Trump made a campaign island, but his was on fire, and it was all uh, Joe Biden's fault. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, like, yeah. Trump Trump makes an island, but it's in rust. Yeah, uh, yeah. <laughs> it's just full of a bunch of naked people killing each other. Yeah, uh, <laughs> yeah. I mean, yeah, you know, it's it's griefers, it's hackers, and it's Russians screaming. Yeah, wow, that that is exactly my experience with rust. Yeah. <laughs> wow. I, I think someone in, in chat said something about Hyperspace. I, I've played Hyperspace online. It's it is a great game. I don't mean anything bad about it. It's I, I really love that game. It, it's just like 
talking yeah. about the aesthetics. Dude, I am I haven't really had the opportunity to play a game in months. Oh yeah? Like yeah, a new well, one? Huh? No, 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 just like really just anything in general. It's like I, I used to kind of work in some time to play Destiny, but uh now it's just like uh with the pandemic and everything going on, you know, I've been putting a lot of effort into this and mm. Uh, hopefully it shows. If it doesn't, you watch your mouth. Uh, <laughs> I'm kidding. Uh, but yeah, so I've, you know, so I haven't really had the opportunity to play much. Like I play Pokemon Go on the daily because I like it a lot, you know. And uh, that's that's pretty much you know been about it. Otherwise, like I've been watching a lot of uh, uh, like TV, YouTube lately. Um, yeah. And then just yesterday, I actually, uh, I was a guest on two upcoming podcasts later this month. Oh, yeah, nice. I won't say which ones, but I will definitely tweet them out there, everybody. Follow me on Twitter, at Tom Clancy. That was smooth. That, that, yeah, this is how you do marketing. Yeah, that was real smooth. And hey, if you like the jokes you're hearing right now, consider hitting, the, hitting that follow button down uh, just to the, the down here, I think, you know. You get to see wonderful jokes like this four to six times a week with other different game developers. Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah, this is wonderful. I'm 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 terrible at like the self marketing thing. Like somebody yeah. was all uh don't yeah. forget the H, it's important. Damn straight it's important, fictional cat. Thank you for remembering my line. I forgot it. Uh I also like another one I like to say is, is that uh, all Toms have H's, but uh, the ones who don't put it in there are lazy. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> yeah. You know, somebody actually asked me that one day. They were always like, why is there an H in your name? And I was like, because I'm not lazy. You know, but yeah, that was that was a wonderful joke, Tom. Well done. Well done. Thank you. Laugh <laughs> uh, oh, but it's man. tricky, right? It's 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 so difficult doing jokes when you don't have the the direct personal connection of like a face on face you know yeah like it is it's really hard it, it's really really hard it's and and i think it, it shows for a lot of uh, uh i know stephen colbert took his show uh like home for mm -hmm. during the pandemic or i'm not sure if they're doing the whole show but they're doing like clips at least and he's recording it from home and i love stephen colbert i think he's fantastic uh but it, it's it's such a bizarre experience seeing him do that show live without without a studio audience laughing at him and you know, do still doing those kind of breaks between the jokes. Yeah. It's tough. It's really but difficult. And yeah. unlike the big bang theory, he's actually funny with that laugh track. Yeah. Yeah. True. And, and unlike the, you know, or in the case of the big bang theory, you remove the laugh track and it becomes hilarious because it's, it, it, it becomes like Tim and Eric levels of, of awful. Yeah. Except they're not trying to be Tim and Eric awful. They're trying <laughs> to be funny. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Which is what makes it, you know, I don't know. There, there's some like disturbing pleasure. See, I, to be taken I, in. I take a bit of offense with that show personally. Uh, and uh -huh. because like I look at it right and it's just I, I'm I'm a nerd. I have yeah. been for a very long time. Mm -hmm. And this comes down to like uh, uh, like the, the framing of a joke and like the structure of a joke. So it actually ties into this. Um, mm -hmm. where it's cause like, you, you know, you have the setup, you have the punchline, but like when you, you kind of break it down even further, like there's the, the butt of the joke, the situation person or thing, uh, that you are using to like frame the humor. And then you have, uh, 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 the, like, the celebration of the joke, like, like the point of the punchline, the thing that like that, that uplifts and brings the funny. You know, right. and it's uh, Big Bang Theory is a wonderful example of, you know, nerds and stuff being used as the butt of the joke because it's easy. Yeah. You know, no, for sure. and because and, yeah. and, and, uh, Penny, I think her name is uh, 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 the, the, the woman on the show that isn't Blossom. Um, right, right. You know, she's very clearly like she's the normal person. And like, you know, like, mm. yeah, we laugh at her every now and then. But. But she's not the one we're supposed to laugh at. Yeah. You know, yeah. we're supposed to laugh at everyone else, the people that like I would identify with. And mm -hmm. I think that sucks. But then you have like a show like Community, uh, which also no laugh track because Dan Harmon's actually funny. 
uh, is the show that that kind of takes it and never really puts the the nerds, the the other characters as the butt. They're always being uplifted in the punchline, yeah. and like yeah. that's what I like because like at the end of the day, I feel like comedy is this this wonderful tool. And while yeah, we can like poke fun at people and situations or like people in power, you know, like make jokes about uh, senators, CEOs, presidents, all that stuff all day long. But, you know, we shouldn't ever like the, uh, you know, we should punch up. We shouldn't punch down, yeah. you know? No, I, yeah, I, yeah and, for sure. Yeah. And I feel like a lot of big bang theory stuff just, just punches down and that's why I don't like it. Whereas like community just is, one of the best comedy shows ever made. Yeah, I, I agree. I think the the uh, the the Big Bang Theory as it is it is it, it's terrifyingly bad in the sense that it's been on for so long. What's well, finally gone? Is it? It's actually gone now. I do believe that the past oh. season was the last one, and we're done with it. And everybody who's oh. on that show can now retire and never come back. <laughs> I mean, yeah. they could. The The money they're going to make from reruns on that is crazy. Well, I mean, it's like, you know, it was the number one show on TV for how long. And when yeah. Friends was in that position, everyone on that cast was pulling $100,000 an episode. Yeah. You know, like, it, yeah. unless they have, like, ridiculous drug habits or Maserati addictions, yeah. they'll be fine. Yeah. Uh, but real quick, Deluxe Tux, uh, Big Bang without a laugh track is like the comic strip Garfield minus Garfield. Uh, yes, but Garfield minus Garfield is hilarious because it's just fun yeah. watching John go slowly more insane. That it, it, it's I, I think there's even an interview with uh, Jim Davies uh, where he he says that he like re reluctantly agreed that Garfield minus Garfield is funnier than regular Garfield. I, I'm not sure if that's true, but I, I've heard something like that. And if that's true, then you know, my respect for Jim Davies has gone up by like tenfold. <laughs> uh, As, sorry, just real quick here, but Scruffles Bear just said something I think is hilarious in chat. Uh, Penny and the Big Bang people is like Jane Goodall with the apes, uh, m but without the possibility of one cast turning on her and killing her. <laughs> Dude, yeah. it, it's nuts, man. Apes are like... Like, especially chimpanzees, those things are ludicrously strong for how small they are. And oh, yeah. they're mean. Yeah. It's like they, they've, they have unlocked strength that we've, that we've, that we've lost at some point when we well, got it, up on two feet. Yeah, it's, it's, yeah. Uh, yeah. I don't even know anymore. To chimpanzees, <laughs> may you never come to my house. Yeah, pretty much. I mean it, chimpanzees, never come over. Like, nothing against you, but no. So, uh, well, uh, I have, like, one last big kind of question on this. Uh, and that is, uh, where did this idea kind of come from? Like, do you do stand-up uh, in in your, like, day-to-day -day life? Or were you just like, you know what? Uh, or did, like, some friends of yours just go, hey, you're kind of funny, dab. Uh, do you, you should do comedy. I I think um, I I had that thing growing up where I was the you know the funny the the funny kid in class um, that I, I think a lot of like real comedians I I will refer to them as real comedians uh, do and then they kind of get on and they keep doing that stage thing so I did do stand up at one point in my life uh, it I I think it's it's I think it's a lot of fun I think it's terrifying. Uh, and I, the reason I quit was just because I, I had a lot of issues like doing the same material. I felt weird doing the same material. And I, I didn't, I don't think I realized at the time that that is how you do it. Like, you, you know, you create your set, you create your, you know, you have your routine and then you perfect that over like the uh, duration of like a year at least until you have it down to like a, a perfect thing. And then a lot of comedians nowadays kind of throwing everything out at the end of the year and starting over and building a new routine. Uh, but yeah, I, I did stand up at one point, and yeah. But beyond that, like stand up and comedy, as in just watching and consuming comedy in general, and and just looking into like comedy theory and understanding comedy and looking at comedy and like thinking about it, is is just like been a lifelong kind of obsession of mine. 
uh, to you know to the point where I can you know recite entire Eddie's art shows and and like older Robin Williams shows because I watched them over and over and over and over and over. Yeah. Uh, so it, it was a question of like, you know, what what you know, there's you you write about what you know, and I, I at this point I know a lot about stand up and know a lot about comedy and like the ideas of comedy. Uh, so yeah, I, it's something I like to think about. Uh, Clan Man is that even if you don't, even if the sense of comedy in Clan, the sense of humor in Clan Man too, isn't exactly for you. Like I'm hoping that there is at least enough interesting like comedy theory there because there's a lot of conversations in the game with comedians in the game, and they they'll give you their thoughts and this and that, and and hopefully like there's enough interesting stuff there. Like uh, that that's kind of the lore of this this world. I don't have like the fantasy you know, third age kind of uh, long running three millennia of, of history that random NPCs can tell you about. But yeah. instead, you know, I can have, I can have like a physical comedian be like, like, yeah, no, you got to stand on one foot because it's a lot funnier. And then, you know, go into a long tirade of why that's important. Yeah. Uh, so it's, yeah, that's, that's kind of the approach. Well, uh, to kind of piggyback off of that question, uh, who were some of the stand up comedians that, you know, uh, like, who are some of your favorite stand-up comedians? I know you mentioned Robin Williams there, and mm. dude was a legend. Yeah, you know, yeah. I mean, like, yeah, God, that is so sad. Like, yeah, they, 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 there were a lot of celebrity passings that really kind of, like, hit me in the, the, the feels. But, mm. like, damn, dude, that one, yeah. God, that one hurt. That one hurt. I think it was a testament to how many people he touched. Like, he was such a you know he, he just fantastic in yeah. every way like his, his films are great his stand-up was great his like TV some of the stand was great yeah exactly yeah like, i mean the and, dude and, did everything yeah and like stories that people have about the guy uh you know just general personal stories that they had they're all like everyone's talking about how good of a guy he is and mm -hmm. then to have him struggle with these drugs and that depression and the alcohol is just heartbreaking but yeah, yeah. he's he is uh uh I think he was my first big like uh you know the the he was the top one for a long time when it came to stand up. Yeah. Uh some of it, some of his his routines have kind of are kind of showing their age uh, and showing that they're kind of product of this, their time but I think a lot of his stuff still holds up. Yeah. Uh, you know it it definitely has that kind of uh, coming out of the 80s into the early 90s and and late 90s kind of uh post yuppie uh hyperactive cocaine fueled you know energy to it that kind of part of the charm but he was just really 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 great uh especially like uh some of his like mid or earlier like full-scale shows uh, other than that i think uh uh two that come to mind immediately is steve martin mm -hmm. uh because i think i think a lot of people don't uh remember or look at steve martin as a stand-up comedian because he kind of stopped doing it uh there, there's a great story about steve martin and, and why he stopped uh which inspired me a lot because it's, it's kind of it, it gives you his insight into his thoughts on comedy essentially he had some kind of he had a, a a bit at the end of one of his shows where a guitar was supposed to come down uh from like the top of the stage and into his arms and he was supposed to play one chord and you know then put the guitar away and that was the whole gag yes band your, band your player steve martin uh partially the reason why i play the banjo as well uh and 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 uh, that show three times in a row the guitar wouldn't come down and the third time it didn't come come down he i think he wandered off stage or something or after that he was like yeah if that's the entire bit and and i just felt because of that i'm not going to do it anymore like it, it's such a i don't know it's it's weird it's a quick analysis of the bit that really works because his his humor is really esoteric and really strange in a way. Yeah. Uh, like he, he, he would come onto stage and, and just kind of make faces or have like this arrow through his head and, and just say really weird things or do really weird things. There's the, there's the classic joke where he does when he walks up to the mic really seriously and goes, well, there's something you don't see every day. And then he just backs up and he starts screaming and flailing his arms. And it's such a <laughs> stupid joke. And it's so good. And, and that's at a time where people weren't doing that. You know, yeah, uh, uh, I, I, I love him. I, I think he's great. And he's then also finally, an excellent writer. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And he is a fantastic musician. 
someone mentioned in chat that he's a musician. He's an amazing musician. He's a really good banjo player, and mm -hmm. uh, he he uh, he wrote a musical with Edie Brickell, I think that was really good as well. Nice. Uh, and uh, yeah, and then uh, I think Eddie's art uh, is, oh. was a huge inspiration for me as well. Uh, my favorite bit of his will always be uh, the bit about uh, the rebels showing up with a flag. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Because if the, the, the long and short of it is that uh, unless a, a dissident or rebel movement has a flag, you can ignore them because they don't need to be taken seriously. But when they put it on a flag, that's when you have to take them seriously. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, the so they've no got a flag. Country. Those are the rules that I've just made up. Yeah. And I, I, yeah. he's kind of he's, you know, like, he's not right, but he's kind of right. Yeah. Yeah. He's, yeah it's, it's a, it's a, see, this is the point where it becomes, you look back into it. He's like, why is that bit funny? And that's when you ruin the joke. And that's like 90% yeah. of what I'm doing with Clamman right now is destroying my own sense of humor because I have to look at everything. Why it's funny. But yeah, that, I mean, that joke is about, it's, it's about bringing down like colonialism and looking back like onto a point in history where, there was this uh, British elitism and this superiority that kind of allowed them or like gave them uh, uh, or a self-imposed reason or, or uh, you know, allowed them to conquer the world and subjugate tons and tons of people yeah. in, in awful, awful ways. But and, and then he boils it down to the flag and that's really hilarious. I th and I think I think it's funny because that's that that's one part of Eddie's art and then there's the other part where he just he will throw in a random word or a random gesture in the perfect way and it'll be hilarious there's a part from uh i don't remember which which one it is it's essentially uh, uh yeah i think it, i think the bit is that he's trying to learn the flute and he fails it and he and he just goes ah I bugger off with this i'm just i'm going away i'm going to as a bad jan and as he says that he's just like walking away into the like the back of the stage and there's something about it the 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 timing the way he says it that it, the way he like half heartedly improvises it that is amazing he, he's like he's one of the best absurdist improvisers i think in, in stand up in general and and i think i think that's something that's often looked down upon in the like the true uh, quote unquote stand up community uh, is that improv is a very different thing and and it is art kind of bridge those two in a really yeah. really Way. which is it kind of stands in contrast to uh one of my personal favorites is the late mitch hedberg and oh, yeah. if you you know watch his sets over and over again there is no variation between yeah. uh the jokes and yeah, yeah. you know like he's not a guy who improvises but it doesn't matter because his delivery is so deadpan and on oh, yeah. point yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. Be, like the absurdity of his humor is that he's in these completely normal situations, but looks at them from just these completely random viewpoints. Like his uh, joke about uh, and being in Las Vegas and being told to move from uh, in front of a door because he was blocking a fire exit. And his response, of course, being that if I'm flammable and have two legs, I'm never blocking a fire exit. Yeah. You know, and, yeah, and it, it's great, and he makes those jokes work so well. Yeah, it's it, 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 it he uh, and I think in a similar vein is, is Stephen Wright and his yeah. kind of dead oh, thing. God. He's we're, we're, if he ever emoted, I think yeah. I would have a heart attack. Yeah, and I, I it's it's and it's so good. I think it's something that uh, when I when I made uh, Clam Man too, when I made the stats for it, the ones we we talked about earlier, Aqua Dynamics, etc. They they were all meant to correlate with a certain like school of comedy, which I kind of boiled down as much as possible uh, to as few as possible, uh, and 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 I kind of ended up looking at a lot of comedians to kind of like boil down what is funny, you know, what part of this fits in here, and obviously everything fits into everything. You know, there's no comedian that's only physical or only absurdist or only you know observational. It's it's it all comes together, but there are like dominant yeah. uh, dominant aspects of their style and. When you look at Stephen Wright, he is an incredibly like physical comedian in the sense that so much of what he of his jokes work because of how he looks, how he says it, and how he yeah, like he has this perpetual headache, uh, you know that that just makes everything funny. Like when when he he does the the typical like uh, 
Las Vegas headliner, you know, bullshit comedian uh, routine, but does it in the driest, most, you know, pained way that it's hilarious. Hey, he everybody, that- how was your flight into town? Boy, yeah, are exactly. my arms tired. Yeah, they told me I could order breakfast anytime. <laughs> well, what's the joke? I, they told, uh, uh, I, went, uh, I, I went to I, a restaurant. I, I, I mostly know him from his like character acting stuff. So uh-huh. uh, he has a joke where it's like, I went to a restaurant where they told me you could order uh, breakfast anytime. So I went in and ordered eggs Benedict during the Renaissance. <laughs> <laughs> like it's that kind of thing. And that's a joke uh, that wouldn't like, like we're laughing now, especially because we know what he's like and how he performs it. And we can picture his face. But it wouldn't be as funny if, if someone like with a smile on their face would tell that joke. Yeah, if know? I if, if I uh, changed camera angles like right now, and I uh, just looked over at my audience, I said, "Hey, you know, the other day I uh, went into a restaurant, said they serve breakfast every day." And I said, "Hey, can I get some uh, scrambled eggs from the Great Depression?" Yeah, exactly. You know, it's, it's not the same. It's not at all. Yeah, like, it's not. It's so important. No, uh, real quick though, just because I have to say this, Deluxe Tux, I hate you. In that way that I'm supremely jealous of you. He got oh, to man. see Mitch Hedberg. Uh, yeah, I'm jealous too. That is a that is a memory to treasure. Yeah, yes, it is. And you 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 treasure that memory for me. Extra treasure it. But well, uh, Martin, we have talked a lot of jokes, and yeah. we were the least funny joke talkers I've ever seen. Uh, Most likely, yeah. And I've seen a lot of unfunny people. So uh, I will say uh, it has been a pleasure talking with you about this. Uh, But before I let you go, I have one last bit that I like to do at the end of every show. It's a bit I call the five questions. Now, the five questions are a series of, well, uh, five questions that I prepare before the show that have nothing to do with anything that we've talked about so far. All right. There are no wrong answers, but you will be judged by me. Fair enough. I'll take that. All right. So question number one, you have a choice between the two following superpowers, teleportation or astral projection. Which one do you choose? Uh, teleportation, because if I do it quickly enough, I could technically produce an image of myself in the same way that an astral projection would. I also would. Yeah, no, yeah, yeah, teleportation. Teleportation for sure. All right. Uh, question number two What is your favorite holiday? Uh, Christmas. Everybody says not, Christmas. Not, not even close. All right. Uh, question number three What's your favorite Halo game? Uh, Halo 3 followed by ODST. You know, I am just glad that somebody I've asked that question to has actually played Halo. <laughs> yeah, uh, I mean, yeah. It's, it's There's a handful of questions that uh, either don't ask or are like a complete just shot in the dark as to whether or not people are going to answer them. And like one of the ones I don't ask anymore is uh, I don't ask people from other countries if they play Pokemon Go. Uh, I previously would ask them that because I want their region exclusive Pokemon. Uh, (laughs) But everybody says no. And then like Halo games are one of those ones. And I was just like, I don't know what it is. I'm like, I got a feeling. I got a feeling that Martin knows a thing or two about Halo. Sure. So, and I appreciate both of your answers. So uh, question number four, the Kraken. Is it real or a myth? I have a aggressively hostile view on anything supernatural, natural, uh, so I, I can't even joke about it. I just nah, not nothing's real. Everything's real. Nothing's real. Everything's real. Okay, yeah. that's that is about the best non-committal answer I've ever heard. <laughs> so I can't I can't upset all the like Kraken stands. Look, you know, I mean. I got nothing. But, all right, (laughs) question number five. In your opinion, what is the best television show of all time? 
Oh man. Oh, that is tough. Uh Okay. How how do I get like 10 minutes here? No. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh you know what? Uh, a, a bit of Fry and Laurie with Stephen Fry and Hugh Laurie. A uh, sketch comedy that ran from uh ran in the 90s i think it might even have started late 80s uh but ran in the 90s mostly uh some of the most fantastic underrated sketch comedy of all time i've, I've seen it a million times it is it is absolutely fantastic wait stephen fry and house yeah had a show yeah together yeah that is it is it is honestly uh like python-esque in its quality yeah, like it, it, it is. It is. I, I would. I would rank it with uh, Python and and like in, in British comedy. Huh. It is absolutely amazing. Uh, well, I guess I'm gonna have to check this out. So, yeah. Uh, well, Martin. Uh, aside from uh, at Clam Team on Twitter with the underscore, it's important. Uh, is there anywhere else people should be going to check out information about you and Clam Man? Uh, it's, it's mostly there. I mean, uh, I, there's some presence on, on steam on, on, uh, the open mic and headliner, uh, pages for, for clan man too. I guess additionally at, at Marafress, which is my, my person, uh, my, my personal account where I tweet about more non sequitur things than, than on clan man. But yeah, in okay. general, it's, it's those two. Cool. Uh, well, if you're watching on YouTube, I'll be putting those down in the description box down below. And while you're headed there, why don't you hit that subscribe button, hit the thumbs up, hit that little bell, you know, things will be great. And for everyone else, uh, well, you know what to do. He just told you. So, uh, well, Martin, thank you so much for joining us today. Yeah, thanks for having me. Like, dude, I love the days where I get to, like, have super nerdy conversations about stuff. And <laughs> uh, I was not expecting one about comedy at all any point oh, I, in the life of this show i am i am I, I i'm i'm up to talk about comedy with anyone anytime for any period of of uh, any length of time and i care about it deeply and i love talking about it it shows uh, just going off of your conversation today so uh well i'm gonna change the camera angle real quick but don't worry i'll be right back uh so to everyone out there in the audience today Thank you so much for joining us, uh, especially Scruffles Bear. Like, thank you for the follow. That's awesome. Uh, you know, for anyone who this is their first time here, I do this show about four to six times a week, uh, talking to game developers and really anyone else who seems even moderately cool who will, you know, come join me on the show. Uh, you know, just, just, just anyone pretty much. Uh, but before I go, I just want to take a moment to say happy Labor Day to everybody uh, in the United States. It's coming up on Monday. We will have be off on Monday. Uh, and just my kind of crazy way of saying happy Labor Day. Maybe celebrate this year by making some white-collar workers, you know, work for a change. You know, since they're the ones who get the day off and not the people for whom the holidays actually or so uh until then everybody or until next time remember to wear your mask drink some water take some vitamins and be kind to each other because it's not a race and we're all in this together i'll see you all next time on the next episode of that tom clancy show but until then have a lovely weekend and i'll see y'all later bye